Hey, hey, Dr. J. Today we're going to talk about permutations and combinations. So we'll start off with some definitions. A permutation is a way in which a set of distinct objects can be ordered or arranged. So that is a permutation. So for example, if I have the set A, B, and C, a way in which these objects can be ordered or arranged. So you have various permutations of the set. Now, in this class, in this chapter, we don't pay much attention to the set braces. We don't really think too much about them like we did in previous sections. And I'm also not going to pay much attention to the commas. Um, those are just to, de to declare that these are distinct objects. So when I write out my permutations, I'm simply going to list them the same way you're going to list them in your homework. So A, B, C. That's one permutation. You could also do A, C, B. Yeah, you could also do, what else could you do? Uh, B, C, A. Or you could do B, A, C. You could have C, A, B. Or you could have C, B, A. So there are six possible ways to order or arrange the letters A, B, and C. Okay. Repetition is not allowed. So you can't do AAA or BBA or CCC or CCA or anything like that. No repetitions allowed. One of each. Distinct objects. Now let's compare that to a combination. A combination is a selection of objects from a set without regard to order or arrangement. Okay? So a combination without regard to order or arrangement, you would say that all of these are the same combination A, B, C. Yeah. In other words, these are the same combination A, B, and C. It's a combination of A, B, and C. And it doesn't matter whether you say ABC or ACB or CBA. So there is one combination. I'll use the number one. Is the same as six permutations. So these six permutations all equal one combination. Now, in this chapter, it's going to get very difficult to try to list every single possibility. So what we want to do is we want to count. Our goal in this section 
is not to list every possibility, but to count the number of permutations and or combinations depending on what we're doing in that particular problem. Let's try an example. Determine the number of permutations of the letters A, B, C, and D. Again, I could be really particular and use set braces and all of the notations that we learned in uh, chapter 2. Um, but for this particular presentation, you could just think of them as letters. You don't have to worry about the sets. Maybe we'll get back to that in chapter 13, um, in the very last week of school. So just the number of permutations, how many are there? You don't have to list every single one of them out. Although if you get desperate, you forget the formula, you could list them all out like we did in chapter one, and then after you've listed them, count them. Uh, that's a lot of work, so we should try to avoid that whenever possible. All right, this is all about choices. Yeah. So you have four blanks. Yeah. And how many choices do you have for the first blank? Well, you have four because you've got four letters. You got four choices for the first letter. But repetition is not allowed. So you can't choose the same letter again. So when you get to the next letter, it's three. And then when you get to the next letter, you've only got two choices. And you probably realize by the time you get to the last letter, you really don't have any choice. So one is considered no choice. You have one choice, which is like having no choice. So this is also known as four factorial, yeah. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So there are 24 different possible ways. I'll just say 24 ways. 24 ways to arrange the letters A, B, and C. Note, um, if I would have said combination, there is only one combination, A, B, C, D, yeah, and every permutation is equivalent to this one combination. So the key word here is permutation. That's the key. So if I would have said, it would kind of been a trick question, I probably wouldn't do that to you, but how many combinations are there of four letters? Well, there's really only one, A, B, C, D, because it really doesn't matter what order you pick them in. Okay. Now, sometimes you don't get to pick all of the combinations. Sometimes you only get to pick a few of them. Suppose you don't get to choose all four. Example two. How many three letter com uh, permutations, not combinations, but permutations of the letters A, B, C, and D are possible? So how many three-letter permutations of the letters A, B, C, and D are possible? So you only have three choices. Yeah. For your first choice, you have four possibilities. Then you have 
three possibilities. And then you have two possibilities. Interesting that this still comes out to be 24. And you might think, huh? How could that possibly be? How could there be the same number as there were in the last one? Well, it's a little subtlety. If you've chosen A, B, and C, yeah, the fourth choice, you really don't have a choice for the fourth combination. So when you get to your last choice, you really don't have a choice. That's why the last term is like being multiplied by one. Yeah. So if I'm saying how many three letter permutations are there, that's the same as the number of four letter permutations. There are still 24 possibilities. So same answer as four letter permutations. Yeah. So there are 24 three letter permutations and there are the exact same 24 three letter permutations. To see this with your eyes, you'd have to list them all out. You'd have 24 of them over here and 24 of them over here, and you'd see that they are exactly the same set of permutations. I'm going to spare you that unless you want to sit here for an hour and watch me list out all the, the possibilities. It would be like watching paint dry. Um, uh, let's try another one, though, while we got this on the board. Um, example three, how many two-letter permutations of the letters A, B, C, D, and E are possible. So I give you five letters this time, and you got to pick two of them. So you have five choices for the first one. But once you've chosen the first one, now the second one, you only have four choices. So there are 20 possible ways to choose two letters from a set of five letters. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a recipe? Yeah. You can kind of see what's going on here. You know, there's, there's a little bit of a pattern. It's always going to involve some sort of a factorial. You know? But if you're not using all of your choices, it's not a complete factorial. So we want to have some formulas. Um, and it's going to involve a factorial. exclamation point was the factorials. Right. So let's see if we can get an idea of how this works. Um, you're basically doing a factorial. Yeah. Suppose you had four letters. Yeah. If you use all four, then it would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Yeah. In other words, 4 factorial. If you only use 3, yeah. and they don't have to be letters. I'm, I'm using letters to introduce it. It would be 4 times 3 times 2. And we notice that these are the same. Yeah. So choosing 4 out of 4 is the same as choosing 3 out of 4. The same number of possibilities. Suppose you could only use two letters out of 4. Well, that would be 4 times 3. And, of course, if you could only use one letter... and you had four choices, it would just be four. So there's a factorial here 
that's stopping at a particular point. And a good question is, you know, when do we stop? Okay. Well, look what's happening here. If you're using all four, well, then you stop at one. Yeah. If you're using three, then you stop at two. Yeah. In other words, you don't, you omit the last one. If you're using two letters, then you stop at three, which means you're omitting the last two letters. So notice, you're going to omit, in other words, not multiply, whatever the original number is, yeah, we'll call that N, and then we'll call this one R, that's the number we're choosing, we're choosing R from N. So from is where we're starting our original number, original number. Maybe I'll call that the original. And then we're choosing R. And you'll notice a pattern. Look. 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we're omitting 1 here. For 2, 4 minus 2 is 2. We're omitting 2 of them, 2 of our factorials here. And if you're only choosing one letter, 4 minus 1 is 3. Look how many we're omitting down here in our last box, set of boxes. We're omitting 3 of the possibilities of the factorial. So we have a formula for permutations. It's called PNR. You read this as the number of permutations or the number of ways, if you like. We often refer to that as the number of ways to choose R objects from a set of N objects. So we say PNR, the permutations choosing R objects from a set of R objects. Uh, R from N. Yeah. I know you have to kind of read it backwards. Um, the formula is n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. Uh, we do define, just in case this comes out to be 0, we define 0 factorial to be 1. Uh, this is to avoid division by 0. So if in some circumstance the denominator comes out to be 0, we will define 0 factorial to automatically be 1. Uh, one way to think about that is it's like saying you have no choice. And that's what 0 really means. You have no choice. But you don't want to put 0 into your formula because it will cause the whole thing to blow up in your face. So if you have no choice, well, then it's like 1. Yeah, but that's be dividing by 1. We'll get to that in a minute, though. Um, so let's go ahead and do um, an example of this. Example three. Use the formula uh, for P and R, n factorial over n minus r factorial uh, to 
find the number of permutations of four letters chosen from A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So how many four letter combinations, so that's R, R is what you're choosing, from the original set, n is the number of objects in the set. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 7? Seven? 7. I don't know why I said 8. Let's count that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There we go. So we've got 7 numbers. So we want to do P74. In other words, we're choosing four from seven. So from seven objects, I want to know the number of permutations. How many different ways can I choose four objects from a set of seven objects? You don't even really have to think about all the different possibilities. There's going to be a lot of them. You're just going to use this formula. So it's 7 factorial over 7 minus 4 factorial, which is 7 factorial over 3 factorial. Now let me show you a trick. Don't actually do all the math yet. Write it all out. So 7 factorial is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. And cancel all of the numerators and denominators that are identical. And now you have a much easier calculation. Um, I still expect you to use your calculator unless the numbers are small. So 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 is 840 ways. I definitely don't want you listing out 840 different answers. Um, but you know, if I would have given you this problem in chapter one, which I kind of gave you a problem similar to this, I don't think it had 840 as the answer, but you know, there might have been like 120 or something, remember? And you guys had to sit there and list every single possibility. It took us an hour just to get through it in lab back when we used to actually meet together. So um, now you just get a recipe, boom, it just tells you how many, there are 840 ways to choose four letters um, from a set of seven letters. Let's do some actual applications. Suppose uh, 20 people are in a race uh, we'll call it a three mile race with prizes awarded to first second and third place how many possible ways could the prizes be awarded? Uh, 
Uh, it turns out that the number of miles in the race does not matter. So this information is irrelevant. What matters is the number of people. So that's n. n is typically the larger number because r can't be larger than n. And then r is the number of choices. So it's first, second, and third. So there are three choices. So this is the number of permutations of 20, choosing three winners. So there's 20 people. There's three possible winners. How many different ways could the prizes be awarded? So that would be 20 factorial over 20 minus 3 factorial, which is 20 factorial over 17 factorial. Don't actually do all this math. You're going to knock yourself out if you do that. Just go like this. All right, 20, 19. Oops, I, I missed 18. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, blah, 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 blah. You could fill them all in if you want. I'm just going to say dot, dot, dot. And then on the bottom, it's 17, 16, 15, 14, blah, 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 blah. So notice the denominators. We call this the tail. Yeah, this is called the tail. You can find the matching tail. And all of these are going to cancel. 17s are going to cancel. 16s, 15s, everything is going to cancel. So you always want to cancel the tail and keep the head. Yeah, so the head is 20 times 19 times 18. You do not want to go plugging all these numbers into your calculator. You'll end up blowing up your calculator. It'll give you an error message. So 20 times 19 times 18. There are 6,840 different ways to award the prizes at this particular event. So remember, in a permutation, order matters. Yeah. In other words, the person that got first place and the person that got third place, those are different. Yeah. So you know, you might think of that as A, B, and C, or and then that would be different than B, C, and A if you're thinking of the prizes as being first, second, and third. Yeah. So the order does matter. However, in a combination, the order does not matter. So let's run a different kind of race. Suppose in a race, Identical prizes are given. To the first five runners. Right. Identical prizes. So, you know, we sort of say we don't give first place, we don't give second place, we don't give third place. Just the first five runners that cross the finish line get a prize. If there are 30 runners in this race, how many possible ways now? All 
Ah, oh, so this is sort of like everybody's a winner, yeah? You're first place, you're first place, you're first place. Like, it's like saying the first five people are all winners, yeah? I know. The, fir the person that was actually in first is not going to be very happy that, you know, four other people get exactly the same prize as them. But, you know, that's just so that when you get towards the end of the race, you're not really fighting for first place. Because as long as you're one of the first five, you win. Yeah, you're all winners. Okay. Well, now the order doesn't matter, right? That's basically saying A, B, C, D, E, that's five, yeah, A, B, C, D, E, is the same as B, C, D, A, E, and which is the same as A, E, C, B, A, and so there's all these different combinations that are the same. Ah, combinations. That's what this is. If everybody wins the same prize, regardless of what order they came in, that means that the order doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether you're first or whether you're second. Right? It does matter that you're one of the top five. That matters, otherwise you don't get a prize. So this is what we call a combination formula. It's very similar to the permutation formula. We use the letter C for combination. It is the same formula as the permutation formula, but we have to divide by R factorial because all of these are going to have the same values. And this is to um, reduce the total number. because the order doesn't matter. Okay, so if the order does not matter, then you first have to figure out the permutations. That's gonna be a big number. Yeah, it'll be in the hundreds or the thousands or something. And then you're gonna reduce that number down because all of those different combinations that are all the same, yeah? Remember in example one, you could have you know, six permutations that are all the same as one combination, right? or some, something to that effect. OK, so in this case, our R is 5. We have five runners, five prizes, and our N is 30. So we want to do C35, the number of combinations choosing five elements from 30 elements. So choose, C means choose, or combinations. Yeah, five from 30. I know, it seems backwards. If I were you know, able to go back in time and change the formula, I can't though, it's too late, it's been around too long, so it precedes me. I would say C530, choose five from 30. Yeah. Uh, some books write it this way. Some books write it this way, from 30 choose five. And it kind of reads from left to right. From 30, choose five. Um, in fact, not only do some books use this notation, but if you Googled you know, the combination formula or the choice formula, one of the first, you know, in the first four or five hits that you get, you'll see this formula. It's just a, a reproduction of the same formula. All right, so what do we got? We got a... Uh, P35 over 5 factorial, which is 30 factorial over 30 minus 5 factorial all over 5 factorial. This is very messy. So we like to rewrite it like this. We 
we rewrite it as 30 factorial, 30 minus 5 factorial, and then 5 factorial so that we don't have a fraction within a fraction. This gets very messy. So this is the nice way to rewrite uh, C30, 5. Now, I haven't done the math yet. I always wait till the end. If I start doing the math now, I might regret it. Okay. I'm going to have to make some more room on my board here. So I've got C30 and 5 is 30 times, uh, let's just write it out one more time. 30 factorial, 30 minus 5 factorial, and then 5 factorial. So that's 30 factorial, 25 factorial, and then 5 factorial. Now be nice to yourself, you know, don't try to throw all these numbers in the calculator. Write them out first. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. At some point, you can just say dot, 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 3, 2, 1. I always like to show the, the very end of the factorial. 25 factorial, 25, 24, 23, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. So that's 25 factorial. And then 5 factorial, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I'm going to write that whole one out. All right, look at these tails. There's a tail. Find the matching tail here. And those are going to cancel. 25, 24, 23, 22, blah, 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 3, 2, 1 is going to cancel. 25, 24, blah, 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 3, 2, 1. Those are gone. Yeah. If you want, you can put it in your calculator now. Your choice. You can calculate now or keep simplifying. It's not going to matter. You will get the same answer either way. If you calculate now, you're going to get a really big number and then it's going to divide back down and get smaller. Or you could keep simplifying to try to make that a little bit easier. Um, I like to do as little calculator work as I can get away with. You know? So I'm going to avoid this. I'm going to wait to use the calculator. I'm going to simplify a little bit. All right, just go two by two. So five goes into 30. How many times? You know that. Six. Uh, 4. 4 does not go into 29, but 4 does go into 28 7 times. 3. 3 goes into 27 9 times. And 2 goes into 26 13 times. So now you have 6 times 29. 29 was not simplified times 7, times 9, times 13, all over 1. You don't ever have to cancel the 1. And now I'm going to use my calculator. 6 times 29, times 7, times 9, times 13. And you're going to get 142,506 possible ways. Don't worry about dividing by 1. Everybody in the class knows when you divide by one, you just get the same result. So there you go. This is sometimes called the choice formula or the combination formula. So this is combinations of five objects taken from a set of 30 objects. Interestingly enough, this number was actually a lot bigger if you did the permutations. <laughs> if you got 30 people in a race and you're actually going to, you know, count the order that they run in or that they finish in, you're going to get a much larger number than this. It would be in the millions or something. Okay, so we got 142,000. It might even have been in the billions. I don't know. I didn't calculate it.
Okay, so for the next few examples, uh, we're going to have to decide very carefully which formula to use. They start to get mixed up now in the homework. And similarly on the test, I may not exactly tell you in the question which formula to use. Some of them are pretty obvious, but you need to read carefully. A history teacher uh, requires students to choose six papers from a list of 20 papers that were assigned during the semester. Um, to be used, or to be cited, I'll say, I'll use a proper word, um, in their final report. So maybe you've got like a term paper or something that they have to do at the end of the semester. All right. The students must list their choices in order from most relevant or most important, I'll say, to least important. How many possible ways can this be done? So again, the professor gives them a list of 20 papers. So that's our N. N is 20. So, you know, we don't want you going out and finding your own papers. These are the 20 papers that we uh, handed out in class. They're scholarly articles or journals or uh, primary source documents or something like that. And the students are going to choose six of them. So that means R is six. Now, are we going to do P? 26 or are we going to do C 26? Which one is it going to be? It can't be both. It's got to be one or the other. So read it carefully and decide does the order matter? Yeah. If the order matters, you know, if if you know say I think it's 1 5 9 6 3, you know, put them in a particular order versus somebody else puts it in a different order, does that matter? Well, it says right here the students must order their choices. <laughs> yeah. So if order matters, use the P formula. Okay, order matters in this example. So we want to do P, 20, and 6. It takes longer for me to write down the whole formula than it does for you to actually do it. How many ways can this be done? P26, that's 20 factorial over 20 minus 6 factorial, which is 20 factorial over 14 factorial. Um, I don't have room to draw the entire tail, but watch. After the 15, right, you have a matching tail, or maybe I'll write it out here. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. As soon as you get to the 
15, everything past 15 is a duplicate of the ones that are in the bottom. So in the bottom, look, your tails match, you see? 14, 13, blah, 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 3, 2, 1, and then 3, 2, 1. They both end with 3, 2, 1. So this entire tail cancels with this entire tail. And so you're just going to end up with the bottom canceling. And you end up with 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, and 15. Now do that on your calculator. 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15. Be careful. Uh, your final answer is very big. It's 27 billion 907 million 200. Sorry, 27 million 907 thousand 200. I overestimated the original value, but there's the answer. Let's try another one. A classroom of 35 students must choose four students to serve on the student council. How many ways can this be done? So we got a class of 35 students and we need four people to volunteer or to be selected for the student council. Uh, there is no particular order in which they're chosen. So once you've chosen the four students, it doesn't matter. It's not like one of them is more important than the other. They're just four representatives for the student council. Okay. So since the order doesn't matter, we're going to use the combination formula. Sometimes we say order doesn't matter, or we'll say something like order is not important. Okay, so you can just choose the four students and say, okay, you four students go serve on the student council, and it doesn't matter what order they serve in, right? They're all equivalent. It's kind of like that race where everybody's a winner, yeah? So this would be P35, 4 divided by 4 factorial which is 35 factorial, 35 minus 4 factorial, and then 4 factorial. Remember, in order to simplify the fraction, we just take the 4 factorial and put it down in the denominator with the 35 minus 4 factorial. So this is 35 factorial, 31 factorial, and then 4 factorial. Remember, once you get past 31, you can just say dot, 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 because that's going to be your tail. And then down in the bottom, you have 31, 30, 29. That's another tail. So the tails match. But don't forget, this is the C formula, the combinations formula. So you have this extra piece here that you don't want to forget. So that's 4, 3, 2, 1. I always do this last. All right. it, I, you can do it first if you really want, but it's almost always easier to do it last. So cancel the tails. Yeah. The tails cancel. So now you've got 35, 34, 
33, 32. And then the bottom is 4, 3, 2, 1. If you want, you can calculate now or you can simplify a little bit. If you're impatient, you just want to get it done, stick this in your calculator, you'll be done. All right, I like a little bit of simplifying here. Let's see what we can do. Uh, let's see, two. Two goes into 32 16 times. Three. Three goes into 33 11 times. Four. Four does not go into 35. Four does not go into 34 either. But four does go into 16 four times. So now you can give yourself a little bit of an easier calculation. Remember the denominator is now one, so it's irrelevant. It's just dividing by one. And now you can just do 35, 34, and then 11 and four, because this last number was a 32, then it became a 16, and now it's a four. So you've got 35 times 34 times 11 times 4, and that's going to be 52,360 ways in order to choose four students from a class of 35 students to serve on the student council. Okay, um, let's see. Pizza. Suppose you can choose five toppings from a list of 18 toppings. Uh, duplicates are not allowed or multiple of any of a topping are not allowed so you can't go pepperoni 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 or quintuple pepperoni or a triple sausage or anything like that you can't do that so you can have one order of pepperoni one order of sausage one order of olives whatever you like you can choose any five toppings from a list of 18 toppings how many different pizzas can be made? All right, well, you got to decide. Does the order matter? Yeah, or not? Does the order matter or does it not matter? Well, I don't think the order matters, yeah? Think about it. Pepperoni, sausage, olive, jalapeno, and onion, that's five toppings, is the same as onion, sausage, pepperoni, olive, and jalapeno, right? So since the order doesn't matter, N is the larger number, 18, we're choosing R, five toppings, so we're going to use C and R because the order is not important. Order is not important. So it's going to be C, 18, 5. 18 factorial, 18 minus 5 factorial, and then 5 factorial. So that's 18 factorial over 13 factorial, 5 factorial. You do this a few times, you'll get really good at it. Once you see the matching tail, just go dot, 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 dot. So there's your tails. All right, and then save the five factorial for last. So cancel out the tails and then do this last. Dividing by five, four, three, two, one. So now you've got 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 
divided by five, four, three, two, one. And again, if you're impatient, if you're just trying to get the right answer and you don't really care about being elegant, then just go ahead and do it now, you'll be done. I like to clean this up as much as I can. So two goes into 14 seven times. Three goes into 15 five times. It's hard to see that, it's a five now. That's a seven now. Four goes into 16 four times. Oh, and look, five does not go into 18, does not go into 17, but it does go into five. So I end up with 18, 17, four, and seven. 18, 17, four, and seven. I know that's hard to see. There you go. And now I only have to do smaller numbers on my calculator, it makes it a little bit easier for me. So it's 8,568 possible pizzas. How many different pizzas? 8,568 pizzas. Then they would all be different. Yeah. Would all, and they would all have five toppings too. So with no multiples of the same topping. A, uh, a coach is choosing nine players to be on the starting lineup. Um, soon as baseball coach. So we've got baseball coach. Um, he's choosing nine players to be on the starting lineup. All right. How many ways? Oh, oh. He has a roster of 40 players. He has to pick nine of them. How many ways can he do this? Can this be done? So we got nine players that we need to choose from a roster of 40 players. Yeah. Does the order matter? It doesn't say clearly whether it matters or not. You have to know a little bit about the way a lineup works. Yes, the order matters. What If you start first, that's not the same thing as if you start eighth or fifth, right? So what place you are in the lineup matters. Yeah. So in general, a lineup, the order matters. Yeah? First, second, third, etc. Yeah? So we have specified positions for who gets to go first and who gets to go second and who gets to go third. And we're going to choose nine of them. So if the order matters, we use the P formula, the permutations. We're choosing nine players from a roster of 40. So that's 40 factorial over 40 minus 9 factorial which is 40 over 31, 40 factorial over 31 factorial. Remember, as soon as I recognize the tail, I can stop. There it is, 32. Yeah. So the tails will cancel. You could actually just go back and use the techniques from the previous section, right? You have 40 choices for the first player, 
Yeah. 39 choices for the second player. Uh, 38 choices for the third player. All the way down, this should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players. Yeah. And so the denominator has been canceled out. And this is the number of ways you're going to be able to do it. It's going to be quite large. 40 times 39 times 38 times 37 times 36 times 35 times 34 times 33 times 32. It blew up my calculator. Yeah. It's a 9, 9, 2, 2, 5, 5, 0, 0, 7, 7. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, just for fun, this is thousands, millions, uh, hundreds of thousands, millions, billions, trillions, so over 99 trillion ways for a coach to choose nine players from a list of 40 if the order matters. Yeah. Again, if the order doesn't matter, if you know batting first is the same thing as batting last, but it's not, but if it was, if it didn't really matter, then this would get reduced by quite a bit. Okay. All right, um, that'll do it for the section. Uh, we got this whole section done in one part. Um, so the last section will be 12.4, coming at you pretty soon, maybe tomorrow or the next day. All right, Dr. Jordan, signing out.